Hey, let's make a gallon of apple wine. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. As of course, as always, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button and I will try and do one of these once a week. The thing I like about making apple wine is that there are only three ingredients. It's as simple as it can get. We've got one gallon of apple juice, we use about two cups of sugar, and we use about a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. And that's all there is. The first thing we need to do is that we need to uh, go ahead and pour off about two or three cups of the apple juice. And the reason why we're doing that is that we need to make a little bit of room for the sugar that we're about to put in and also to lighten the weight a little bit because we're going to shake this up to dissolve all the sugar. In fact, let's go ahead and put in our sugar, which is two cups of sugar. Okay. Put our cap back on, nice and tight. And we can start shaking it to dissolve the sugar. Now I should say there are a couple of ways that you can dissolve the sugar. I could have just put it in a blender with a little bit of juice. I could have used a stick blender. I could have uh, heated up some apple juice on the stove and then dissolved the sugar in that way. But because I do need the exercise, <laughs> because I got a lot of this to work with, I need to start shaking. It'll take a minute or two. Okay, looks like that does it. Next thing we need to do is take our cap off. And we're going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. Don't just dump it in, but if you can, try and sprinkle it out the best you can. So, and we're going to replace some of the apple juice that we took out. And after that, all we need to do is uh, put on an earlock. Now, when I first started making wine and didn't have a uh, demijohn or a carboy or, or a jug, uh, I was making my wine in the original container that the uh, juice came in. It's already been sterilized, so that made things a lot easier. When I finally got some earlocks, all I did was just put a hole in the cap uh, seal, uh, put in the uh, airlock, seal it up, and voila. This will work just as well as <clears throat> will work just as well as this. Move some of this out the way, drink that later, clean that up later, and here we go. So this is one that I'm starting today. This one is one that I started uh, almost two months ago. So this is actually drinkable. Now, I'm gonna give it another uh, month or two and before I bottle it, and uh, there we go, apple wine. Just that easy. It's always a good idea to label your jugs of wine. You wanna know what batch you're making. This, in this particular case, this is my seventh batch of apple wine. With each batch, I've made adjustments to the amount of sugar that I start with, and uh, it also, gives me a date that I, that I started the wine so that I'll know roughly how long it's been since uh, uh, I started and I, and I need to rack it or if I need to just determine just how long it's going to be that I'm going to let the wine sit before it's ready to be bottled. And I always do the original gravity reading uh, so that I know just how strong or the amount of alcohol content that's going to be in the wine when it's finished. In this particular case, I'm starting with a gravity reading of 1.080. Now, in an upcoming video, I'm going to talk about one of the hardest things it's been for me about making wine, and that is, it's a question of time. 
you've got to wait for it. Please click on the subscribe button and be notified uh, as soon as I get this video out. See you then.